It's Black Friday slash Cyber Monday, so I thought to compile a list of some of my favourite gaming monitor deals that are spotted on Amazon. I'll be using the UK storefront, but some of these deals will very much be live across the world, so make sure you check out the links down in the description below to go to your localised Amazon store. Now, I'd also like to make a disclaimer that I've not tested all these monitors, however actually having reviewed over 250 different panels, I thought it would be quite handy to siphon through the deals and give you some of my favourites. I'll be facing my monitor, so sorry for actually looking away certain times during the video, because I'll be reciting some of these monitor names, which are pretty much impossible to remember. Now, first off, we have got the ViewSonic Omni VX2418-C. It's got a 24-inch VA panel that operates 1080p at 165Hz. It's a good entry-level gaming monitor, and it comes in at just £104. Similarly, so is the BenQ Mobius EX240N. This actually sports a 165Hz Full HD VA panel, and it's actually very similar to one of my favourite gaming monitors that I've previously reviewed, the BenQ Mobius EX240, so therefore omitting the N from the name, and that's because that had an IPS panel, but the one that is currently on deal and available at £105 has got that VA panel. Now, we'll be reviewing this very shortly on the channel, so make sure you check that out soon. Now next up we've got the MSI G2422. It has a 23.8 inch full HD 170 hertz IPS panel. Indeed over here you're going to get better viewing angles and colour accuracy. So therefore a worthwhile consideration over the VA panels that I've just mentioned, specifically given that it's not too much more expensive at £109. Now next up we have got the Asus TUF Gaming VG249Q. This actually has pretty good features, specifically for a full HD 144Hz 23.8 inch monitor, and that's because it has got ELMB Sync. For those people who are not aware, you can use AMD FreeSync or NVIDIA G-Sync alongside the likes of MBR, which is motion blur reduction, and it gives you ELMB Sync. It's actually really good for those people who want to play a little bit more casually, and given the price tag of roughly £130, it is almost a no-brainer and a good worthwhile upgrade over some of the monitors that I've already mentioned. Now, speaking of which, one of my favourite gaming monitors, which is not technically on a Black Friday sale, is the AOC Gaming 25G3ZM. Now, this sports a 24.5-inch 240Hz VA panel. Yes, indeed, it's absolutely mind-blowing in terms of its overall performance, and not only in terms of the responsiveness, but also the input lag, and also the overall contrast ratio that you're getting, and that refresh rate and resolution, and it comes in at just £139. So if you can afford it over some of the monitors that I've already mentioned, it's definitely worthwhile going for it, because I can definitely attest to it, and indeed it's one of my favourite high refresh rate gaming monitors out there on the market. Now next up we have got the MSI G27C4X. Now this is a 27 inch full HD monitor that operates at 250 hertz, has got a curvature and a VA panel. Therefore very much a custom for those people who want just a little bit of that larger form factor but still want that higher refresh rate. A good worthwhile recommendation given that right now it can be found for roughly £159. Now, similarly on this sort of form factor at a 27 inch, you've got the AOC Gaming CQ27 G2SE. Now, in comparison to the monitors we've mentioned so far, this has actually got a QHD resolution, in other words, 1440p. And yes, it operates at 165Hz and has got a VA panel, but it's a great sort of monitor to use for more casual gaming needs. This actually comes in at just £170, and it's actually a fantastic prize for a 1440p panel. So definitely worthwhile considering, at least if you can afford it. Now next up, we've got the Asus TUF Gaming VG27VQM. Now I have reviewed one of its variants, which operated at 280Hz, although I recommended running at 240Hz. So therefore, this monitor actually might tick a lot of boxes. 27 inch, 240Hz, ELMB sync and full HD and coming in at just shy of £200, it actually does do a phenomenal job. For hardcore gamers out there that do actually want some of those features and at 27 inch form factor, then you might want to look at this Asus monitor. Now next up we have got the AOC Gaming AG275QX. Now this again is a QHD monitor, so 1440p running 27 inch and also has 170Hz refresh rate with HDR400. Now this monitor actually does tick quite a lot of boxes and it comes in at just £240. Again, phenomenal value for money given you're getting a 1440p resolution and definitely something that I can see myself recommending. Now elsewhere we have got the Asus ROG Strix XG16AH P2 
P-W. Now this is my favorite portable gaming monitor that I've actually reviewed to date. It's a 15.6 inch G-Sync compatible 144 hertz IPS panel. It can pretty much be taken with you anywhere you go and it's a great sort of portable solution for those people who are going to be gaming around the go for example with a laptop or of course if you just want to run it on a computer for some given reason. Now it can be found right now for roughly £250 which is a great deal in comparison to its RRP which is normally over £380 and that is also with the sort of packs that you're getting with this certain setup. Now elsewhere we have got the AOC Gaming C34 G2X. Now I actually reviewed this monitor, I was very much impressed for it, at least when it comes to more casual gaming, and that's because it's got an ultra-wide 1440p resolution, 144 hz and it also has got a VA panel. It actually takes a lot of boxes, and given its mind-boggling price of £279, I do think it's a worthwhile deal, and something that you might want to consider, at least if you want a 1440p ultra-wide for more casual gaming, or even if you're just going to be browsing the net. Now next up we have got the Gigabyte M34WQ. Now this has got a 34 inch IPS panel running that WQHD resolution, in other words ultra wide 1440p and therefore it's actually pretty good. It's got 144Hz refresh rate, better sort of colour accuracy in comparison to the AOC that I've just mentioned and it doesn't cost so much more but it is still a little bit more pricey at roughly £400. Definitely worthwhile considering if you want a 1440p accurate monitor. Now then we've got one of my personal favourites, at least when it comes to high refresh rate gaming at 1440p, and that's the Samsung Odyssey G7. Now this has got a 1000R curvature, which is a little bit extreme and it's not exactly my favourite, but it's got a 240Hz HDR 600 certified monitor with 1440p and also has got all the shebang that you're going to need. Now this actually can be found for a few variations but the one that I can find is at roughly £424 which is an absolutely phenomenal deal given the overall performance of the monitor that you're getting. Again I've reviewed it before and I can definitely attest to it so saying that it's one of my favourite high refresh rate 1440p gaming monitors out there on the market. Now moving up the scale, we've got the HP Omen 27K. Now this is a 27 inch UHD IPS panel that runs 144Hz and has got that fabled HDMI 2.1 port for those people who are going to be using it alongside a console for example. Now this monitor is a bit more pricey at £500 but it is actually on a deal right now and therefore actually makes it quite good at least and makes it this in terms of this list that I'm making in terms of the video. So definitely worthwhile considering if you want a 4K gaming monitor at 144Hz. Similarly you've got the Philips Gaming 329M1RV. Now this is a 32 inch 4K monitor and it also has got HDR400 and Ambiglow. It's also got that fabled HDMI 2.1 port for console gamers. Now this can currently be found for £640, marking a good deal in comparison to its RRP which is normally roughly around £800 to £900. So again, worthwhile considering if you want something that actually ticks a bit more boxes over the HP that I previously mentioned. Now elsewhere we've got the Gigabyte Aorus F132U. I think it's one or it's an I, I'm not really sure. Anyway, this has got a 31.5 inch IPS panel that runs 4K at 144Hz. It ticks a lot of boxes and has got that flat panel as well and therefore good sort of colour accuracy. Worthwhile again considering if you want it as an alternative over some of the other monitors that I've mentioned, for example if you haven't been able to find them on a deal. Now next up we've got the Philips Evnia 34M2 C7 600MV. Now this is a 34 inch ultra wide monitor that operates at 165 hertz, has got a VA panel and mini LED structure, therefore giving you good sort of brightness. Now this monitor has got a price of roughly £657, which is a good deal over its roughly seven to £750 price tag, and therefore something that you might want to consider. It has also got the fabled HDMI 2.1 port and even USB Type-C connectivity. Now next up we've got one of the monitors that I have actually reviewed and did title it as to if mini LEDs are actually worth it and that is the AOC Aegon AG344UXM. Now it has got a 34 inch 1440p panel that operates on 
at, uh, sorry, it operates at HDR 1000 and it's got 170 hertz refresh rate with an IPS panel. It actually does tremendously well with its mini LED structure and will give you that very bright image with that HDR 1000 certification. It really does come with it. Now this monitor can be found for roughly 700 pounds, which is roughly a hundred pound deal in comparison to its RRP. So worthwhile considering if you want a mini LED monitor. Now then we've got the Corsair Xenon 27 QHD 240. Now I've actually not reviewed this monitor particularly, but I've reviewed two variations of this panel, one of which is coming very shortly via AOC. Now this monitor has got a 27 inch OLED panel that runs 240 Hertz. It's also got HDR10 certification and USB Type-C connectivity. It really does do tremendously well when it comes to its overall pixel responsiveness because of its OLED panel and when it comes to its overall input lag. Worthwhile consideration, especially if you're given its overall price tag, making it among one of the cheapest 27 inch OLEDs out there at roughly 820 pounds, down from roughly 1000 pounds of its RRP or at least when it was first released. Now speaking of OLEDs, we've also got the Samsung Odyssey G8. This has got a curved OLED screen, a 34 inch, and therefore has got a 14p resolution with that ultra wide format. Now it's got HDMI 2.1 at 175 hertz refresh rate and it comes in at 850 pounds. A pretty good deal if you think of all the things that you're getting and given that OLED sort of technology means that you might actually get a very good response time and input lag and great sort of color accuracy and contrast if I can get my words out correctly. Anyway that's 850 pounds and worth considering. Equally, at £850, if you do want, not want OLED technology, you might want to go for the Samsung Odyssey Neo Quantum Mini LED G75NB. I'm not really sure if that's that its entire name, but I think there's cr crazy confusion when it comes to Samsung naming. But anyway, it's a 32-inch 4K monitor that runs 165 hertz, and it's got a ridiculous HDR2000 certification with HDMI 2.1 port. So therefore making it very much handy for a variety of different sorts of gaming needs and something that you might want to consider. So see if you can get that is right now on a deal at roughly 860 pounds. Now next up we've got the MSI MAG 342C QD OLED. Now this indeed, as the name might suggest, is a QD OLED runs at 1440p at 175 hertz. I've actually reviewed the Philips Evnia, which I'd labeled my favorite gaming monitor that I've reviewed to date. And this monitor is very much similar. It's got display HDR True Black 400 certification, phenomenal color accuracy across the board, excellent pixel responsiveness, and also input lag. It's got HDMI 2.1 port and USB Type-C connectivity, coming in at just shy of 1,000 pounds. Now finally, just to conclude this video, we've got the AOC i1701FXUX. Now this is not exactly a gaming monitor, but I just thought to chuck it in there just in case you want it. It's a 16 inch USB Type-C portable monitor at Full HD. Very much handy for those people who want to go on the go and don't want to spend as much on that Asus monitor that I mentioned before. So anyway, hopefully this video has been helpful. I'd be curious to know which deals you have gone for. Make sure you pop them down in the comment section below. And of course, if you've liked this style of video, definitely do consider dropping a like, subscribing, and hitting that bell notification. All of which would be greatly appreciated. And again, sorry for the slightly impromptu type of video. As such, I've been Totally Dubs, and I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves, and goodbye.